Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Aaron Gordon here, and we're back here with the Aaron Gordon Podcast. I have my special guest here, Derek Smith, as we used to call him, D. Smiths. <laughs> what's good? Not much. How are you, buddy? Uh, pretty good, man. You know, what was it like, you know, obviously, you know, growing up, you know, on the north side of Indianapolis, um, obviously what, what most people call basketball heaven. What was that like? I loved it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, thought about moving a couple times, but then I couldn't I couldn't leave Indiana for high school basketball. Yeah, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about, too. Yeah, I know. You know, what I'm was mad. that like? Because obviously, you know, you grew up around the area. Um, obviously, you know, Rick Smith is your dad. And, you know, you obviously grew up, you know, going to Pacer games and, you know, all that type of stuff. And, you know, what was that like, you know, growing up, going to high school games and, you know, be, just being a part of it, you know, going through through the ranks? I mean, it was it was, it was always awesome. I mean, you can understand partially what it I mean, you can understand what it is now that you're getting yeah. older with your brother. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it was always cool, like going to Pacers games and stuff, always getting recognized times it was kind of annoying just because you can't really go out as much yeah. once I got older it was a little easier but it was always cool having them around yeah so obviously you know I know you probably hate getting this question because I hate this question quite as much um and uh you know obviously for you it's a little different because you actually were born into you know what's it like being Rick Smith and like for me it's a little different because Eric wasn't always in the NBA um you know my yeah. entire life but you know, what was it like, obviously, uh, you know, growing up as an NBA player's son and, you know, a uh, pretty prominent NBA player's son? I mean, it didn't really ever bother me that much. Uh, some people say, oh, it must be annoying and stuff like that, but it, it never really bothered me. Like you said, it was something I grew up with my entire life. It'd be it, a little different with your situation where when you were younger, like, it's, it's just Eric. Like, yeah. <laughs> but then once he got in the NBA, I know it's, it's different now, yeah. like, People kind of start popping up out of nowhere, but yeah. I get that. For me, it was a little different, though. I mean, I, I never didn't know it, so it was it was it was different. Um, now that he lives in Arizona, it's kind of strange now because he doesn't get recognized there. So mm-hmm. it's interesting to go there and not have that kind of situation happen. Versus when he comes home, it's he yeah. gets recognized <laughs> all the time. So it's different. So I kind of see both now. So obviously, um, you know, you were with prominent AAU teams. Um, you know, can you tell us just a little bit about like your AAU journey? Because obviously I played against you so many times in AAU and actually got to play with you one year in college, but we'll get to that later. You know, what was it like, you know, you know, growing up playing on prominent AAU teams in Indiana? Um, I mean, I, I got lucky and got picked up by a, a good team early on, a team that I shouldn't have been on. So I, <laughs> I stayed on the same team pretty much the whole time. Uh, I think I got picked up going into our eighth grade year. Mm-hmm. And before that, I was only six. I was a six-two center, and I was awkward and <laughs> hadn't grown yet. So it was it was a team that I shouldn't have been on. Like I didn't play much at all early on. But um, as we got older and as I got better, we our whole team kind of started popping off a little bit, and we end up being a really good team. So uh, that was Speece into Heat, as you know, obviously. And mm-hmm. we played you quite a few times. I don't know how many times we lost, though. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, obviously, what was it like, you know, going into uh, Zionsville? Obviously, not technically a prominent school, but obviously, you know, with you there, it, you know, you took it into a prominent stage. Obviously, Dockage was there. And, you know, it was a really good time for Zionsville because not a lot of people were talking about y'all until, like, you guys got there, especially your older years. You know, what was that like? Kind of bringing the school that, you know, people knew but didn't really talk about into, like, a prominent school. Yeah, I mean, I always kind of thought that, we didn't necessarily get the respect we should have had. Obviously, we were good, but um, you said as we got older, my our best team was actually my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Um, had some incidents and injuries that cost us quite a bit, but uh, we had a player get arrested, another player break his foot, so it kind of made it a little tougher. But um, it was awesome going to Zionsville, uh, help try to bring success to them when they hadn't necessarily had a lot. I mean, we didn't win a sectional, but we did. We did good in a sectional. That, I mean, you understand that's sectionals. very difficult. Like, like that's the thing that I hate about Indiana. Like we, they load up sectionals, like, and it's fine. Like I'm, I'm at the point where like people used to just bash players for never getting out of a sectional. But if you're in certain sectionals, like it's yeah, it's completely different. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, different. <laughs> the sectional we had won like five out of six years, and the one year they didn't win, it was Arsenal Tech, who had six yeah. All State players and an NBA all, or NBA player. So it's like. Yeah you make it out of our sectional and you don't win, then it's, that's something, but our sectional was good. Um, the sectional 
Zionsville's in now, per se, like we beat the team that won that sectional three out of my four years. So it's like, it's one of those things where if you have the wrong sectional, it's, you never know. We weren't considered a successful team because we didn't win a sectional, but that yeah. sectional was stacked. But that's the thing. Do you think that they should change that rule in Indiana basketball? Not really. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how much better of a system they can make. It's not like they could do a statewide playoff. So like, yeah, I was thinking about that a little bit, but then again, I'm just like, that's going to make it probably even more unfair for certain teams, especially if they have to travel and do all that extra. You're stuff. about to drive five hours to go yeah. play a team. Like you're not going to, you, you shouldn't probably, you're not probably going to win if they're, unless you're just that much better than them. But I mean, I think the sectionals are good. I was pretty mad. My team, our times will move sectionals for personal reasons, but it was awesome for them because they started winning <laughs> stuff. So his, you know? Yeah, so obviously you had a dominant career. What was it like, you know, when you were named to be an Indian All-Star? Because obviously that's one of the most prestigious things you could do in all of Indiana is to be Indian All-Star. What was that experience like? And, you know, uh, what was it like when you got the call or, you know, whatever happened? I forgot what happened for me. I think our coach just told me it was something just weird. But what was it like when you found out that you were Indian All-Star? Uh, it was actually one of the – I still say it's one of the highlights of my career. I mean, it was something I didn't realize I wanted as bad as I did until the day of, because we were told, Hey, if you're like, they kind of told the, well, there ended up being 14 of us. I think they told the top like 2025, like the week in advance, Hey, we're going to make our calls on Thursday night. Yeah. If you get a call on Thursday night, good for you. Like, you made it. If you don't get a call, then sorry, but you didn't make it. So it was like, I didn't realize how much it meant to me until th Thursday at like yeah. eight o'clock. I hadn't, <laughs> hadn't got a call yet. And I'm sitting there like, well, I guess I didn't make it. I was pretty yeah. mad my junior year not making it because I had all my all my teammates for AAU pretty much all made it, mm -hmm. with the exception of like four of us. Um, so just sitting there third that third that like that night I was sitting there forever. I felt like and just waited and then. I was probably the last per last person to get the call, <laughs> but like come nine o'clock, I got a phone call, random number. Best believe I was hype as shit. Yeah, <laughs> I was going crazy, but it yeah, it did mean a lot to me. It's just especially I was the first male in Zionsville history to get it, which I believe it shouldn't have been that way. We had a lot of really good players before me, like yeah. five six years ahead of me. There was a bunch of good players, but uh, being the first one for Zionsville was huge for me and obviously now uh, Isaiah Thompson's got it and then apparently they've got some high level recruit at Zionsville now that's a sophomore so mm. hopefully I kind of helped a little bit pave the way so obviously uh, you commit to Valpo and obviously we went there you know I was when you were there that was my rest year you know what was that process like you know commit to Valpo obviously not the biggest name school but definitely a basketball school you know what was that entire process like Cause I know the story, but I mean, I want you to tell everyone else. <laughs> well, when I went, when I, uh, actually, I haven't even really talked about it too much, but when I, uh, first started to go to Valpo, I did not want to go. Like when I was going to take a visit, I did not want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> my dad made me, my dad made me, uh, he's like, he's like, we're, it's a couple hours away. We're going. And I really didn't want to do it. Cause at that point I, I had stopped talking to some of the bigger schools I had a lot of injuries in high school that messed up a lot of my op opportunities. And um, so I was battling with ankle problems in my whole high school career. So it kind of messed up a lot. So I had at that point, once the bigger school stopped talking to me, I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to school in Indiana. I don't care. Like I don't want to do it. So I was, I was against going to Valpo. My dad basically made, Hey, look, we're going. That's it. Like, <laughs> get, in, get in the van. We're going. Yeah. I was, okay. Whatever and uh got to valpo and just loved it mm -hmm. like absolutely loved it i uh i planned my official visit that weekend for the next weekend because they said they had somebody coming in a couple weeks that was going to take their last scholarship offer basically and then took my official that next weekend committed two days later and didn't look back from there yeah um obviously that was a whole different team and nothing against any of the how it currently is but when I committed it was a small school but that year they were a top top 25 top 30 Sorry, team yeah, in the country sure. and made it to the tournament the history of Valpo was really rich in general 
Yeah, for sure. And they should have, I was at the game when they played Maryland, they should have at least went to OT. Mm -hmm. Um, They end up losing by three points. And one of our best, one of their best shooters had a three at the buzzer. He got absolutely clobbered, like basically taken out of the air Mm -hmm. and they didn't call a foul. So they ended up losing the game, but it was a, so it was when I committed there, they were, I would say the best mid-major, if not one of the best mid-majors in the country. For sure. So it was, Valpo is such a rich – had such a rich history, and what they did under Coach Drew was incredible. Mm-hmm. So now let's talk about, you know, you going to play for Butler. Um, obviously another school that's, you know, used, well, used to be a mid-major school, <laughs> but another mid-major power that, you know, you, you end up going to. Um, you know, what was that experience like? Especially, like, tell everyone what that experience like when you first went and played at Hinkle. Because I haven't had the experience of being a Bulldog and playing at Hinkle, but I've had the opportunity to, you know, be playing at Seton Hall and, and play against Butler. But, you know, what was that like your first game when you were actually able to play in Hinkle? For me, it was it was crazy. But, um, but it was for so many different reasons. Uh, mm-hmm. Growing up around – around Butler. I like, I went there all the time. Like I went to games all the time. I went to camp every year there. Um, not to mention Brad Stevens was from Zionsville. Yeah. So it was something I was, I was around all the time and they were actually my first offer. And I was one of Brad Stevens last offers before he left for the Celtics. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was all in Butler. I wanted to go to Butler and was all about it. And then once he left, I, uh, I didn't really, I talked to their next coach. I think it was Arch, Archie Miller or no, was that the next coach? I forget who their next coach was, but, um, I talked I to him and it was, I don't know they had a few after it wasn't a Holtman. Um, no, Holtman was next after that. Yeah. I forget who was in between there though. Yeah, I can't but, um, I had talked to him and said, Hey, like he basically told me, Hey, I'm not taking your scholarship away, but we're not basically stated they weren't as interested as Brad was. So mm-hmm. it kind of fell off. I went to Valpo. And then once I left Valpo, I had talked to uh, one of my coaches at Valpo and he had told me that he, he was close with the guys at Butler and said, Hey, like they just don't have any spots for you next year. So it was kind of like, mm-hmm. well, dang. So I started talking to other schools and then, they had a player just decide they wanted to transfer during the summer. Mm-hmm. So a spot opened up and they talked to me. So it was kind of like, holy cow, I guess it's perfect. Like, what are the odds? Mm-hmm. And then, so I committed to the Butler pretty much right away and um, got there. Sorry, it's a long story, but this is all I had. <laughs> special it's for all me. Good. But, this is um, what this is for, man. It's a pilot. I, uh, <laughs> I, got, I got to Butler and uh, – in the first two weeks of practice, I had a, a tear in my right uh, patellar tendon, mm-hmm. my right knee patellar tendon, and uh, had to sit out for three months, which was tough just because you know how it is. You're in shape. You're ready to go. You get hyped up, new school, mm-hmm. and immediately had to sit out for three months. Like, And I couldn't do anything. Like, the only thing to heal it was sit. Like, So I couldn't do anything with my lower body for three months. Um which took out the whole summer and part of preseason. Finally got cleared to go from that. I practiced for a week and a half, two weeks. We did our first scrimmage. And the day before that scrimmage, I felt something weird in my left knee. I figured, okay, whatever. I'm just, I'm not used to running, not used to jumping. I'll be fine. We did that first scrimmage. It was kind of bothering me. And then the next day I told the doctor, like, hey, I, I talked to our doctor because he talked to me all the time about my knees. Mm-hmm. Say, hey, like I kind of have a weird pain in my other knee. Can we just be safe and get it looked at? I said, okay. And I end up having a tear in my left patellar tendon, like my left knee patellar tendon, mm-hmm. both of which I had talked to many doc, like many specialists. Like they they brought me to all different kinds of people, and they said like this isn't a basketball injury. Like we don't know how this happened. Like so, I basically had a split tear. Like my tendon just opened up. I had an inch long tear in both my patellar tendons. Yeah. So I ended up sitting out the next two months for my left knee, which was the first two months of our season. So I missed the first 10, 12 games. 
So it was kind of like when I first came in, it was one of our off game. Like, you know how it works. Uh, first couple games, you play small teams. Yeah. And you get into your big games where we played Florida, we played Baylor, like all these yeah. huge teams beat Florida at home. Should have beat Baylor at Baylor. We end up losing by a couple points, but a game that was back and forth the entire time. That's when they were number one in the country. Well, at that point, I think they were three in the country or whatever. And we were, we end up getting up to five. So like this whole time, our team is crazy successful, which was awesome to me just because I wanted us to succeed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like personally, it sucks. Like you want to be out there for a team that's kicking everyone's ass, you know? Yeah. So we had, we went through all those good games and then it was kind of the, the, the rest period in between the good games and your conference season, you know, kind of, they'll kind of put a game or two off in there where you have somebody, you know, like, okay, even we have a bad game, we're going to win by 30. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I finally got to play in a game and it was, it was just crazy. Like growing up being such a fan and being at so many games and then having this whole thing happen where I've basically sat out for five and a half months, like, just to have the first game. And I remember like, it still gives me chills thinking about like the first time I stepped foot on the court, everyone went crazy. The first time yeah. I scored, it was like, finally I get, I get to play. You know what I'm, like, yeah. I'm sure you had a similar moment when you were a little different. Cause I don't yeah. think you grew up a huge Valpo fan, but the first time you got to play in a year, like, mm -hmm. I know that was crazy, but it was just something like I'd been waiting so long for that one moment. And it was, I, I, I feel bad for anyone that doesn't get to experience Hinkle. Like, even as an opponent, like, Hinkle's awesome. Yeah. But being a fan there, have yeah, it's only got 10,000 people, but yeah. it's such a historic yeah. building and with some of the most passionate fans in the world, I, I swear. Yeah, it really is. It's, a, it's like I always try to tell people, like, when they ask me, you know, what is Hinkle like? I'm like, it's like a really old, old, old like arena like that's like from like the 1930s but it's like it's updated now like it's it's really it's a really unique experience it's hard to explain to people unless they're actually there no at the impossible game. like even, even like, like sh even, even shooting around at practice it's still cool but like yeah it's, just, it's there's no there's nowhere to nowhere to compare it yeah there's nowhere to compare it so obviously you know you played for the dutch national team what was it like to be able to play for a national team uh, to be able to play abroad and, and to be able to do that. Um, obviously, you're not from, um, you're not from there, but, you know, what was it like, you know, representing them? I mean, it was, it was it's cool. I get, there's no other way to put it. Like, it's, it's like a pride thing. Like, yeah. I'm a dual citizen. I was born here. I've never, I've never lived there in my life, but it's, yeah. I'm representing where my family's from. I'm representing my second country. Like, it's just, yeah it's a pride thing. Like, even if it's the same thing as when people go overseas and they put USA on their chest, even if it's not like team USA, like I was on the second team, like it's still, you put USA on your chest. It's just different. Like it's, you're playing for something above yourself. And that's kind of how we were. Obviously we weren't playing for anything. We were just, it was an off year, the year I was there. So we were just playing games to build teams like, to build up the team's morale and everything for the next year, but it's still something that's just uncomparable. Like you're representing a country. Yeah. I don't know how, to, how really else to explain it, but it's just something different. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like I, I try, I'm like, I'm still in the process of, of getting my passport for the Bahamas. And um, I know it's a long process, but you know, I definitely want to be able to play on the Bahamas nationally because I really want to experience that. Like I think being able to, experience something like that is like kind of life-changing you know being able to represent a country on your chest and obviously my mother's from there and I've actually had roots I actually spent like half a year there uh from third going into fourth grade so I actually you know have lived there and it's I think it should be really cool especially most of my family's from there so I definitely want to be able to experience that oh that was one of my like goals in life playing basketball wise was to be able to do like compete in the Olympics with the Dutch national team. Yeah. Obviously the Dutch, the Dutch national team hasn't been there and I don't, I don't know if they've ever been there, but I think the last time they were close, my dad was on the team. Like the yeah. last time they like almost made it was when my dad was on the team. So it was something that like, that's one of his biggest regrets was not being able to take them to the national, like 
it was a, there was a whole big scandal that caused them not to be able to do it, but they would have, they should have qualified for the Olympics. And that was like one of his biggest regrets is not being able to play in the Olympics. So, you know, what was it like, um, obviously after your Butler career was over, what was it like, uh, you know, playing overseas in Spain for a little bit? Um, it was, it was different. I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm used to being overseas. So I didn't have to, I didn't really worry about the culture shock. Like that's, yeah. that's huge for some people. And I wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't like not being with my fam, like not having my family around, but yeah. it's not the, like I had been used to it. So it wasn't terrible, but, um, the hardest thing for me was just my knees. They, they had got better, but I hadn't rest them enough. So it was something like I couldn't run or jump mm-hmm. pretty much half of our practices. So it was, it was tough not being able to do basketball aspect. And then once it's your job, like it's, it's your job. It's not like college where if you can't play, they understand like once you start getting paid for it, it's like you, you can't play. Why are you here? Kind of thing. like it's yeah. either, either play like be on the floor or leave. So yeah. it's, it's just tough, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed part. Like I enjoyed having like the team. I loved the, my team and it was cool playing professionally, but it was something I physically wasn't able to do once I start, my knees start breaking down and then mentally wasn't able to do once mm-hmm. physically, once your body fails you physically, it's hard to do it mentally, you know? So it was just, it was hard, but so overall, Life lessons. So overall, you know, we see you're in a gaming chair right now. You know, obviously, you know, I know about your your gaming life. Um, used to play a couple Fortnite games with you every here and there when I was in that. Oh, so you know, what what is the gaming scene like for you? Obviously, you just told me off camera that you know you moved to P to uh, PC. You know, what has it been like? Um, how has that move been? And you know, what do you like about gaming? I love gaming. I've I've always been a gamer, so yeah. I'm a I'm a nerd at heart. Like it's, <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a gamer. <laughs> like it's just what I do. Um, it's what games do you play? I mainly Call of Duty. Yeah, big Warzone guy mainly. I'll I'll yeah. dabble in some other stuff. Because I, I know Mafia. you know what uh, you play. Oh, you play Mafia? Uh huh. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. Mafia is definitely not one of my more favorite games. But I know you used to play Fortnite. Is not uh, one of your favorite, or is? No, not. Oh. I tried to play. I tried to play uh, Mafia. It was it. It was Mafia Three. Uh, the the one that came out about like three years ago. Uh-huh. Yeah, I really didn't. I really didn't care for it. Um, I like uh, Saints Row a little bit better than Mafia. I was. I used to play Saints Row all the time. Yeah. Do you? I don't want to say this in a way that comes off wrong. Did you ever get offended playing Mafia Three? Not really. Um, not really. I know all. that's that's one of those games like. The way they set it up for the time and yeah, like it, it tried to be realistic to how things would have been back then. So it's like yeah. I could see people getting offended by it, but no, I really wasn't offended by it because I mean you could tell like there's a dip like culture. They did it in a respect. They did it in a respectful way. Like it wasn't yeah, like they did it to make it realistic, but not in a dis. Like they 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 toned it down obviously to keep people from getting. Yeah, I mean, me personally, Mafia 3, um, for some reason, like, I've always been big on Grand Theft Auto 5. I know a lot of people play Just Cause. I'm not a huge Just Cause fan. Um, I know a lot of people are waiting for Just Cause 5 to come out. But for me, there's something about Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto. Like, if if it doesn't have that type of flair, that story mode, that multiplayer, it's hard for me to like other, like, open world games. It's just, it's it's really hard. Yeah, I'm doing... um... I'm waiting for Far Cry to come out. Far oh, Cry, six. I'm big into that. Damn. That and then, uh, Battlefield. Those are the two. Those. Okay, yeah. Now I'll play some Battlefield. I'm so, so what are you doing now? Are you playing more? Like, have you played the Halo? Because I know that hasn't came out on PC yet, or has it? I'm not. I'm not huge into Halo. I used to yeah. play it back in like the glory days halo yeah. one two and three but <laughs> a couple of those that kind of turned me off from halo so i ain't really playing as much anymore man so warzone so how long have you been playing warzone since this came out or were you sort of at a late start um i played it when it came out i actually took a couple months off just because yeah. i got burnt out and mm-hmm. i race dirt bikes now so yeah i kind of focus more on that and oh, stuff. We'll get to that. I've seen that. <laughs> I got a 
took like two months off, but besides that, I've been playing it since it came out. I'm big well, into it. So what is it like riding dirt bikes and stuff? Oh, I love it. It's it's what I it's what I'm passionate about now, and it's what I was in high school. I or not high school before high school. I I'd say I probably rode more than I played basketball growing up. So it was something I knew I was going to get back into the second I stopped playing. Which I actually, I flew, I flew home. I flew home from uh, Spain and I went straight to Arizona and I was with my dad. I was afraid like, Hey, like I knew he was going to be pissed that I stopped playing. So I wasn't even going to talk about dirt bikes. Like I was going to wait, I was going to wait a while before I wanted to be like, Hey, let's ride. I got home and like the next day my dad's like, so we're riding today or what? Like you, you don't play no more. So let's go ride. So I was like, Oh, sweet. So. So I've what was that, that like when you had to tell your dad that you didn't want to play basketball anymore? Bro, that was one of the hardest moments of my life. Like, mm-hmm. I broke down. Like, I was I, – I, I don't really get emotional unless it's with my – like, talking to my dad about stuff like basketball. Like, because that's hard. Like, it's something you grew up doing. It's something you put all your time in. It's something, obviously, he knows what – he's put all his life into it. Mm-hmm. So it was like – I never felt like I was letting my dad down playing basketball. Like there was times where I was like, okay, he was disappointed. I played bad, but it was like, I'm still out here playing. So yeah, he's proud of me for that. So it was like one of those things where I, even knowing, like I, I knew he didn't, like I didn't have to play basketball, but it was something that was like growing up in Indiana with, with him yeah. being him. It's like, how can I not play it? And I'm, I'm huge like I'm big so it's like even more like how can I not play it so it's like the first time I told him like it was it was something I was sitting there all day like I didn't want to tell him like I knew I was done over like I knew I was done playing there and it was just one of those things like I don't I don't want to tell him like it sucks and I I broke down and I was telling him and he actually took it a lot better than I thought he was and I made it made me feel like, why am I even like, like, why am I being like this? What the, what the hell? But yeah, it was tough, dude. It was, it was probably one of the hardest things I've done. Dang. So was it been like, you know, growing up being seven foot since what high school? What was it, was it like? Cause I know, you know, most people. I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> change it for nothing. <laughs> yeah. So like, you get, you get stares because like, I, you know, what's so funny. Like I've always told a lot of people is like, when I'm out with my teammates, like, this, even, like, not even the ones that are seven foot, but, like, it's just, like, when I'm with my teammates, I'm with, like, you know, college teammates, high school teammates, just other basketball players. They don't seem that big, but when they go out in public, it's, like, they seem so much bigger than everyone else. Like, it's, like, the weirdest thing ever. Because, like, like I knew, like, you and Jay were tall, but you guys just look like taller people. But out when you guys go out into the world... I see how much bigger you guys are than everyone. I'm standing next to like Fazekas and Malik. yeah, we, we look so much better. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like you guys are next to like Malik and and and, and Fizikas. Like you guys are taller, but it's not like a oh, wow. Like it's not like wow. But when you guys go out into the world, it's like yeah, yeah, they're they're a lot bigger than everybody. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't change it for nothing. That's why I joke. I well, I joke with Fee, but I'm like, I have to trade you in. You're only five three. <laughs> you're only five three. Like what? I'm killing the kids. Come on now. Well, obviously, you know, you recently got engaged to feed. What was that entire process like? It was easy. I mean, you, you can ask, you can ask uh, my fiance about it. She's, she's like, you weren't nervous or nothing. Like I, I don't really get nervous much. So it was, it was, ca- it was casual. <laughs> yeah. It was but, funny because she used to always be right there, right next to you after every single game at Valpo. Yeah, she don't like missing out on nothing. Yeah, I know. It's it was like she was the one person I knew was not going to miss any any games. Any she games. most my most of the away games too. Yeah, her and her, oh. her and her parents, and you could you could hear her her dad yelling at every ref, every other coach. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Dang, dang. But all in all, like I always say, Derek, man, thank for you know you know joining you know this podcast, man. I really appreciate it. You know, obviously, I hope to get you back on uh you know some other time but you know thank you thank you so much for anytime my guy i appreciate you having me for sure for sure